Hey there folks, this is Ian. I'm an artist at Pingwa, and today we're going to be using Krita to explore inking for comic books. Here's our page that we finished penciling in the previous video. If you haven't watched that yet, please go check it out. We have this page set up for inking. Inking will allow us to create strong final lines and accent the image with some varying line weight and strong areas of black and white and just kind of increase that contrast. Traditionally, inking was done to accommodate the printing process. You needed solid black and white spaces on the page for the printing process because it was using just a single ink process for printing. But because we have digital distribution now, the printing process is not as important, but we still keep inking for stylistic reasons. To get things started, we're going to work kind of like we did in the last uh, video when we went from our roughs to our pencils. We're going to go over to our areas here in the layers panel. I'm going to keep this fills right now. I'm going to combine this down, work that down into pencils. And I'm just going to drop the opacity using the opacity slider above and reduce it these a bit more so maybe about 40% or so good I'm going to make a new layer by clicking on the plus icon double click that and rename it inks and now that this is the active layer I can choose an inking tool just the standard brush in the presets gives you a very nice line and it's perfectly reasonable to use there's a standard uh, pigment liner if you want a consistent line, there's a speedball crow quill that you can use to get a little bit of line variance. There's a calligraphy pen with a little bit more texture on it. And a whole bunch of other brushes and presets. There is a particular pack that I like to use from a uh, developer called Mojo. And I'm going to show you how to add that in now. You can get it from share.krita.org. There's a whole bunch of community created add-on packs. And to add those, once you've downloaded them and extracted the package, I'm gonna show you how to add it. We're going to go up to settings and we're going to go to manage resources. This is where all your brush packs and resource packs will be kept. Uh, and we're gonna go into import bundles because it's presented in a bundle. We're gonna to go to our download folder and right here, Mojo Inc. and open. And now you can see on the left, it's been added into the resources and we'll click OK. You can see over here in the brush preset, some of the brushes have already been added in. You can tell by the white backgrounds. If you wanted just to see all of these brushes on their own, you may need to restart Krita to get this to appear, but we're going to click in this drop down menu in the brush presets and go to Mojo Ink. And now we can see all of the new inking brushes that have been added. Uh, one I like to use here is just this standard inker. As you can see, it has a nice strong variable line. So play around with these, find which ones work for you. But for this I'm going to just stick with the standard inker. Now I'm going to zoom in on my page and show you a little bit about brush smoothing. So when you use a freehand brush, over in the tool options here, there are options for brush smoothing. Basic is on by default. This is something that most tablet inputs use. Because the tablets are so sensitive, when you're drawing, it can result in a very uneven line, even if you think your hand is super steady. But if you put on basic smoothing, it's gonna help that a little bit and reduce a little bit of those jaggies. But you can do even more. Uh, something that traditional inkers use, particularly if you are doing late night inking sessions or doing lettering, is something called a rigging brush. And a rigging brush looks like a normal paintbrush, only it has really long hairs. And what those long hairs enable you to do is have a little bit of judder or a little bit of variance in, in the stroke of your hand, but the brush bristles will actually average out that stroke. And that's kind of how the two other methods work. We have weighted and we have stabilizer. Stabilizer is the closest to that rigging brush. Weighted is a little bit different. I'm going to show you how weighted works. So it's averaging this out here. Uh, distance here, this distance is the amount that the cursor has to travel before it starts applying the brush. 
the stroke ending and controls how the program tries to reach the last position of your cursor after you lift up your stylus. So that's your little flicks like that. You want to get tapered ends. And you can smooth the pressure, just kind of average out when you're pressing down. Add more weight. Scalable distance just means if you are zoomed in, it's going to change the inputs that much. It's assuming that your base distance when you move when you are zoomed in is going to be different to if you are zoomed out. And then I'm going to go to the stabilizer brush. You can see the little ring around here. This is like a dead zone on my brush and you notice there's a slight delay. It's calculating the average. And you can adjust this distance and this delay to change how much or how little adjustment you need. So a lot smoother, even though my cursor was kind of all over the place, it really smoothed that out. But you can reduce it if you want less help. And that's going to help you get sharper corners as well. So play around with those settings, see which one works well for you. When you're inking, you're going to be replicating shadows and defining lines using just solid black. And there's a few techniques that you're going to use where they are appropriate. Uh, if you have a solid fill area, like say I want to do the inside of this hood here, a brush is going to be your friend. But once I've defined the edges, Again, trying to use single strokes here, if possible. I'm going to want to go back into all my brushes. Standard brush. I'm going to fill this area. Sensitivity is nice. Let's say I don't want stark edges to my shadow where it's starting to hit the light here. In that instance, I'm going to do some hatching. Hatching is when you use lines to partially fill in an area and to provide a look of shadow. I'm going to go back to my Mojo inks. I'm going to grab my inking brush. Do some lines here. I wanted some light shadow on his cheek. I can hatch underneath. The eye here, I can hatch this in. I'm still getting a shadowed area, but it's not as stark as the solid shadow. If you want to have even more fine control over those shadows, you can try cross-hatching. Cross-hatching uses lines again, but perpendicular to one another. So if I want this area a little bit darker than here, but not as dark as this, start with my lines going in one direction. Where I want to intensify the shadow, I'm going to Patch direction. And will allow you some control over the gradation of colors. Another method of controlling light and shadow is by stippling. And stippling is similar to hatching, but only you're using dots instead of lines. For this, I'm going to take a basic brush, maybe this pigment liner because I don't want the line variance, and I'm just going to add a series of dots. I 
want to lighter as I go out. And just space those dots out. Where I want it darker, increase the density. This is similar to half toning. We will talk about next. So those are a few techniques and methods for inking in your comic. So practice with the tools, play with stabilization, see what settings work well for you. And until next time, keep drawing. Bingo up.